Welcome to our review on the structure of the Earth. So we need to know what the actual structure of the Earth is first and foremost. Now common questions they've asked us in the past have been to give you a diagram of the Earth like the one on the right and then ask you to label those key parts on there. So first of all in the very very center we've got the inner core which is solid. Then the next layer out is the outer core which is a liquid level. Then we come to the mantle as the next part, and that's almost entirely solid, but it flows. And then on the very surface there, we've got the crust, which is solid, and that's the bit we're walking around on. Now, when we actually wanted to come up with what this earth is made from, we weren't able to just literally drill down through and then just find out what was there. Firstly, it's quite deep to drill all the way down to the core, so we don't have the drills that can go that far. And secondly, it gets incredibly hot. So only about 12 kilometers down, we're getting up to 180 degrees Celsius already. So in order to actually come up with the structure of the Earth, what we had to rely on were different means of studying it. And what we actually do is we use earthquakes. So when an earthquake occurs, it produces something called a seismic wave. And those can be detected on seismometers. Now, the seismometer produces a little chart called a seismogram and that's going to be recording the actual arrival time and the intensity of two types of seismic wave the p waves or primary waves and the s waves or secondary waves and there's an exa example of a seismogram at the bottom there so you can see the p and the s waves are labeled on there and then the height of the line obviously tells us the intensity of it so if we consider what happens during an earthquake and how we can use those waves generated, then near the epicenter, which is the origin, if you like, of the earthquake, then both S waves and P waves are detected. However, it's not the case that we can detect those S waves and P waves everywhere across the Earth's surface, even though we have these seismographs everywhere across the Earth. What we have are some regions which we refer to as shadow zones. Now in these shadow zones, we could have a shadow zone where P waves are found, but no S waves. We could have one where the S waves are found, but no P waves, or we could have one where neither the S nor the P waves are found. And the reason for that is down to the actual ability of those waves to travel through solids and liquids. So to understand why this is, we need to know a little bit more about these two types of wave. So if we consider our P waves or primary waves, these are longitudinal waves. Now they're capable of traveling through both solids and liquids. The S waves or secondary waves are transverse waves and they can only travel through solids. So they're not able to travel through any liquid part of the Earth's structure. So what we saw on that diagram on the previous slide was the fact that we get that shadow zone for our S waves on the other side of any liquid region of our Earth structure. The reason we get the shadow zone for the P waves is just down to refraction of those. So the reason that we actually know that this is important is because if we know that S waves will only travel through solids and P waves travel through both solids and liquids, then by working out where we detect those waves, we can work out the internal structure of the Earth. And that's what Bruno Gutenberg actually stated as a result of his studies about these waves. It must mean that the core has a liquid section. And that's what he said back in 1914. Then to follow that up, what happened in 1936 was another scientist, so Lehman, actually analyzed P waves and worked out that the very center of the Earth is solid. So that makes up the inner core. So by studying these seismic waves, we've actually now worked out the sizes of both the inner and the outer core. And we know that our inner core is made of the solid and the outer core is the liquid part. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe the structure of the Earth and are able to label a diagram accordingly. You can describe S waves and P waves in simple terms. And you can also explain how to use the detection of our seismic waves to work out the overall structure of the Earth.